Manhattan. Hi, I'm Michelle from the Women's Center of Greater Danbury, and we work with folks of all gender identities to help them have healthy and safe relationships. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today. So when you think of your favorite people, maybe your best friend, your brother or sister, a teammate, what is it about your connection with them that you enjoy? What makes you want to hang around with them? I will bet you anything that connection has a lot of the elements of a healthy relationship that I want to explore with you today. So the first element of a healthy relationship is communication. Now, I know you know communication has to do with words and talking, but there's also lots of other ways that we communicate non-verbally, like facial expressions. I'm smiling at you, so you know I'm happy to be talking with you today. I'm using my hands, a little off camera, but I do use them. So hand gestures, body language, all different ways that we express ourselves and communicate how we're feeling without using words. So a good way to be a great friend and have a nice healthy relationship is to be a detective and see those clues other than me saying how I feel. My body, my face is telling you how I'm feeling so you don't have to guess. The next element of a healthy friendship I want to talk about is empathy. You've heard the idiom putting yourself in someone else's shoes, and that's exactly what empathy is. It's holding space for somebody to have their feelings without trying to change anything. You're just there to listen and be a good friend and let them know that you understand because you've had a similar experience. Maybe they had a pet die and they're feeling sad. Well, if you've experienced loss, then you can totally understand that they're feeling sad and they might want to cry. You get it. You've been there. Empathy is different from sympathy. Sympathy is when you understand with your head. That would be that you maybe never had a pet die, so you don't know what that feels like. But in your head, it makes sense that somebody would be sad about that. And so you have sympathy for that situation. But empathy fosters connection. Sympathy is maybe looking to fix the situation by distracting them or going out for ice cream or something like that. It's taking their mind off of things. While empathy really shows that you can be there with them and their feelings, and that's what a good friend is all about. So in a relationship, we never want a situation where somebody has more power and control over the other person. What we want is equality, where both people are valued the same. They're able to give their opinions and share what they want to do together. And each person takes turns about deciding on how you hang out and what you're doing, right? We never want a situation where one person says what happens all the time. That's not equal and it's not fair. So what we wanna see in a healthy friendship is taking turns. One time you decide what movie you're gonna see or where you go to eat and another time your friend can decide that. So having equality in a friendship is so important because it shows that each person is valued the same. Trust and honesty are two elements of a healthy relationship that go hand in hand. Trust is when you share personal information about yourself to somebody else and you trust that they're going to hold that secret or your personal feelings just between the two of you without sharing it, without using it against you. That's trust and honesty in a relationship. Right? You're going to trust that person has your back. If somebody says something about you, they're going to stick up for you. And then they're not going to take any information you've shared with them and use it against you, like texting it around or spreading a rumor. Trust and honesty in your friendship with that person means that you know they're going to keep that secret or that 
personal information private. They're going to keep it between the two of you and not share it around and not use it against you. So when I say respect, I'm sure you think of having to listen to what a grown-up tells you to do, right? But that's not what I mean when it comes to having a healthy relationship. Respect in your friendship means that you allow for your friend to be just who they are without trying to change them. That means allowing them to express themselves in the way they dress, the way they wear their hair, maybe how they talk what they're interested in, what they like to do. Respect in your friendship is that you allow your friend to be who they are, just as they are, without trying to change them. The last element of a healthy friendship that I want to talk about are boundaries. And boundaries come in four different kinds. The first one is a personal boundary. So this has to do with your body. And since you know you are the boss of your body, you get to say what happens with your body. So you get to decide whether or not you want to give somebody a hug or if you're okay with them putting their arm around you. Whoever comes into your safety circle or inside that personal bubble, that's up to you. You decide what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. So that first element of a personal boundary has to do with your body and you decide. The next type of boundary is emotional boundary. And that has to do with our feelings. It has to do with who we choose to share our secrets with and who we tell personal information to. It's trusting that that person will keep that information just between the two of you, like we talked about before. But you get to decide who you tell those personal things to. You don't have to share with just anybody. Like say you're having a bad day and maybe you're feeling a little blue and a random classmate comes up and says, what's going on? How are you feeling? What's up? You might say, gee, I really don't want to talk about it. But then your best friend comes up to you and says, hey, what's wrong? You look kind of sad. And then you decide to share what's going on. It's up to you to tell what your feelings are and what you're thinking and what your wishes are. You decide who you share your personal information with. So that's an emotional boundary. Another type of boundary is a time boundary. And that's exactly what it sounds like. It's how you spend your time and who you spend your time with. Our lives are so busy and scheduled, right? So you've got schoolwork and maybe after school activities like a sport or playing an instrument. Your downtime is precious. So it's up to you to decide who you spend that time with and how much time you spend doing that activity. There's also something called me time. And that's when you spend time doing something that just you enjoy. Maybe you like reading a book or going on a hike, but whatever it is, sometimes you just need to be alone and spend time by yourself. So a time boundary, again, is how you spend your time either alone or with friends, what you're doing during that time and how much time you devote to that activity. So the last boundary has to do with personal belongings or your stuff. You get to say what happens with things that belong to you. So if somebody wants to borrow or use something, you get to say whether or not they can use it or borrow it. And at the same time, remember, if you wish to use something or borrow something that's not yours, you need to ask permission. Just think about how it might feel if somebody took something or used something without asking you. So in a healthy friendship, you want to be sure that you can ask permission before you take something that's not yours, and it's up to you to decide whether or not you allow something that belongs to you to be borrowed or used. So all four boundaries, whether it's personal space, emotional, whether it's about your time or your stuff, just remember you're the boss of you, and you get to decide what your boundaries are. No one else can tell you what you're okay with and what you're not okay with. And now let's do a little activity together. It's called healthy versus unhealthy. And what I want you to do is think about whether or not the situation that I'm going to describe is a healthy friendship 
or maybe something to be concerned about. The first one is, your friend gets jealous when you start hanging with other people. What do you think? Well, if you guessed that that was unhealthy, you would be right. So in a healthy friendship, what we want to see is that your friend allows you to spend whatever time you want with them and also understands that you have other friends and other interests and allows you to do those things as well. The second situation is you're going away with your family for the weekend and your friend says they'll miss you and they don't want you to go. Now, if you thought unhealthy, again, you'd be right. A healthy friendship is one that allows you to spend time with the people that you wish. It's nice to be missed, of course, but we wouldn't ever want someone to say what you can and cannot do and how you spend your time. So in a healthy friendship, that person would say, have a great time, I'll see you when you get back. What about this last one? Your friend is constantly giving you gifts. Well, getting gifts is a nice thing, but it depends on why they're giving you those gifts. Are they trying to buy your friendship? Are they looking to bribe you into spending more time with them? If they're just a generous person and giving you a gift makes them feel happy and it makes you happy too, that's okay. But you definitely want to pay attention to whether or not the gift is genuine or if there's some other hidden meaning behind that. Great job. Remembering back to the beginning of this presentation, I asked you to think about those special people in your lives and why you enjoy hanging out with them. I'll bet a lot of the elements we just talked about are between the two of you, like great communication and trust and honesty. Honoring boundaries and knowing that you have time to spend together and time to spend apart. Uh, you allow them to be who they are and they allow you to be who you are without trying to change you and lots of other things. So we want to just make sure when you are considering someone to be your friend or hang out with them that a lot of these green flags or these healthy relationship elements are between the two of you. If they're not, for some reason, you may be questioning if somebody's a good friend or if you should be friends with them, you can always ask a trusted adult or you can reach out to the Women's Center. Our counselors are always there and available to talk to you about anything that might be going on in your life, especially when it comes to healthy relationships.